Yes, Your Honor, we're going to be requesting a continuance. And uh, I'm coming in on the Gorman matter, so I apologize. My NOA is not in because my client has not been served. Okay, and you said that's on, on the, the Gorman matter? Yes, uh, my client, Whitney Gorman, is on the line. I don't know if opposing party is here or not. Uh, if not, I guess we would just ask to strike it if he doesn't show. Okay, uh, let, let me double check. Is um, and, and you're you're representing Whitney Gorman, correct, Ms. Johnson? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, and I'll, I'll ask if Corey Gorman is on the line. Corey Gorman, if you're on the line, please unmute and state your name, Corey. Okay, Mr. Gorman is here. Mr. Gorman, do you mind just coming up and just maybe taking a seat at one of the, the council tables? Just position yourself behind one of the, the microphones so we can pick up your pick up your voice. And, and you're Corey Gorman, correct? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Gorman's present. Ms. Jocelyn is on the line indicating that she's has has filed a notice of appearance. Is that correct? Uh, we will be filing, Your Honor. My client hasn't been served yet, so I didn't get it in for today. But I noticed that there was something on calendar, so I decided to show up when I was looking online. Okay. All right. Uh, so, Mr. Gorman, this is you. You filed a motion for a temporary parenting plan, correct? Yes, sir. And then I was taking a look uh, to see if uh, service or the papers were served upon Ms. Gorman, and I had a return of service from. Looks like the sheriff's office indicated that they were not able to to serve. Uh, Miss Miss Gorman. So, did you did you see that document? Uh, yes, I received that. I got that Saturday in the uh, mail. Okay. Um, I gave them both addresses to where she would hopefully find her, and they couldn't find her there. So I don't know what to. Okay. So it so it sounds like so Miss Jocelyn has indicated that she'll be filing a notice of appearance representing Miss Gorman, um, and so with with that event and then also the event of non service of, on Miss Gorman, we're not in a position to move forward today. Um, so basically, I, I think probably what we need to do is is have this matter uh, either stricken or um, so M Ms. Joslyn and Mr. Gorman, you, you two can communicate as far as service issues. You can talk about that. Um, and uh, but for today, we're, we're not going to be moving forward on, on your motion just because she hasn't received notice of it. So let me ask, since um, Ms. Joslyn has indicated that she'll be filing a notice of appearance, generally when, it, when at least one side or both sides have an attorney, we move it to what we call the, the attorney docket, the family law representative docket, uh, which are held uh, generally, Madam Clerk, those are on Tuesdays. Tuesdays and Wednesdays on Okay, so it'd be a Tuesday at 1 p.m. would be the, the general time frame that we'd uh, hear the matter. So Ms. Joslyn, let, let me hear from you if you have a preference as far as if we were to set the matter for a hearing or wait till their service uh, and then have Mr. Gorman noted up for a hearing. Your Honor, I was thinking about this to for um, to make it easier. My initial thought is why don't we set it out four weeks um, that our client is preparing a motion as well. And then um, Mr. Uh, Gorman and I can enter into an agreement for service by email if he just contacts me. That way we kind of save everybody time and money and hassle if that uh, works for your honor. Okay, so you're proposing to continue the matter to March 5th and that Mr. Gorman can contact you and you can make an arrangement regarding having him serve your client via email to you. Yes, I. that way it's easier for him. We can both do email service. I'm okay with that um, and just save everybody a little bit of time and effort. Okay. Or if he wants to strike it, it's up to him, but that would be my initial thought to make it easier for everyone. Okay. Mr. Gorman, do you have any thoughts or questions on, on that? Uh, no, I didn't have her email address, so I couldn't get it to her before this. I didn't even know who she was until about a week ago. Sure, sure. Do you um do you have Ms. Jocelyn's contact information? No, nope. I have her a cell phone number of some sort. I'm not even sure if that's her number because I couldn't get a hold of her after. Do you do you have a, a writing instrument, something to, to write down her, her contact information? Yeah. Nine four. Okay. Great. And then, Mr. Gorman, are you comfortable if we were just to set up to, to, to March 5th for hearing at 1 p.m., or do you want to strike it and renote it? Can we move that a little closer? I've got a shutdown at work. I've got It's going to be a 10-week shutdown that's going to keep me busy like 12 hours a day for a month. Okay. So, you, like, um, to the 27th of, of February, that would be? That'd be, I can do that. That's one, two, three weeks. Ms. Jocelyn? The only issue with that, Your Honor, is we won't have time to get our motion in and give him time to respond. Um, that's why I had suggested just one week after, then we can all be heard at the same time. Or if it's easier, he can strike it and renote it if he wants to wait until after his shutdown. Okay. All right. So 
So it sounds like what you're proposing, Ms. Johnson, you have you have your own separate motions, and Mr. and Mr. Gorman has his his motion that he's previously filed. Uh, so you both have co co potentially competing uh, motions. So there's an argument for efficiency to have them heard both on the same date. Uh, then there's also the issue of timeliness. Somebody files, they want some their day their day in court. Um, any strong feelings, Mr. Gorman, as far as the, the 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 shutdown? If we were to do it on the fifth, is that during the middle of the shutdown? Uh, no, that's the beginning of. Um, beginning of it. It's like I said, it's over a month long. It's there's a big down at the mill, so I mean, it's I'm going to be busy. Okay. Um, the end of February, I can I can manage that. Uh, I'm not sure about the fifth. Is that what you said? Yeah, fifth. Fifth is. I'd have to uh, check into some things at work and see what I could make happen. So, so that March fifth date that's 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 leading up to the shutdown, but it's not officially in the shutdown. Is right. That they they get? give us a, a block on our days that we can take time off of um, prior to the shutdown, so they make sure we've got all our stuff um, taken care of. That way, I mean, they don't even allow us to take vacations or nothing like that. Two weeks prior to the shutdown and two weeks after. Hmm. And so, even if we had it on the the fifth, that that the fifth wouldn't work because that's in that kind of that that zone, the twenty seventh. Would potentially work, but then if it weren't on the fifth, it would probably be looking at late April or mid April. Uh, I well, the sooner the better. I'll try to make whatever I can work. Okay. Well, let's let's do this. Um, you know, there are some complications with the scheduling. Let, let's set it for the the Tuesday, March fifth. I think that allows for for both issues to be addressed from both parties, and then we have a more full picture and probably have a better, a more efficient outcome. So let's set it for March fifth at at one p.m. And then uh, Mr. Gorman has Ms. Jocelyn's contact information so he can communicate with her and they can talk about, you know, service and the like and uh, move, move, move both motions forward. And that's 1 p.m. you say? 1 p.m. Yeah. And you can be here in person or you can join via Zoom, whichever is your preference. Okay. Ms. Jocelyn, any final items? No, thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate it. Okay. Mr. Gorman, any final items? Okay. All right. Um, we are. Here. Thanks. Okay. Um, my, the other party, I think submitted a form saying that he couldn't be here today, um, and asking to put it off a week. Okay. And, and that, that just to make sure the record's clear, Miss, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, Miss, uh, yes. All right. Um, eight, Miss, uh, Day is appointed as a guardian ad litem. Uh, yes, I'm here, your honor. Okay, great. Thank you, Miss Day. And I'll ask if Samuel Mills is on the line. Samuel Mills, are you here? Make sure you're unmuted and, and please state your name. Okay, and so this was a, there was some information that was filed by Mr. Mills. Uh, looks like it was filed on the 31st of January when, where he indicated that we had a compliance hearing set for the 7th of February. He indicated he had a commitment during that time frame um, for an apprenticeship class that was necessary or mandatory. So he's asking for the matter to be set over one week. And that is that your understanding, Ms. Mills? Yes. Okay, and I see that Ms. Looney is here also representing the state. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, and so there's, uh, so there, Ms. Mills is asking that the matter be set over one week, kind of in, in joint uh, tandem with uh, the request from Mr. Mills. Um, Ms. Looney, any concerns? No objections from the state, Your Honor. Okay. Ms. Day, any concerns on your end? No, Your Honor. I think it's appropriate to set it there's, over a week. Uh, 17 cases on. Um, Ms. Mills, if we were to set it over two weeks to the 12th, um any concerns about that i'm okay with it i've done everything i'm supposed to do okay miss looney or miss day any concerns if we're to set the matter to the 21st all right the state would be unavailable on that date but as long as no child support was directly addressed we would be okay with not being present that day okay and i have no objection your honor Thank you, Ms. Day. So, Ms. Looney, just looking at the, the review, uh, I think we're there to review Ms. Ms. Mills' progress, so I don't see anything that directly or even indirectly affects uh, child support. Um, so yes, sir. The only thing I believe that would impact child support would be if Your Honor decided to change the children's custody. Sure, sure. Okay. Well, I think we probably better than set it for the 14th. Uh, we'll set it for the 14th. So we, we will set it over just one week to the 14th of February. And that'll be at nine o'clock. So we'll move it to that date. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Haley Lawrence, are you on the line? Haley Lawrence? Uh, yes, I am. Okay. Welcome to you, Ms. Lawrence. And is Luis Kosar present? Luis Kosar. Uh, yes, I am present. All right. Very good. Thank you, Mr. Kosar. 
All right, so we're here today regarding a, a review of uh, Mr. Kozar's progress related to some uh, parenting classes and other things of that of that nature. Ms. Turnbull uh, sent an email to the parties and also to the court last night indicating her involvement in a, a trial and also uh, asking for a continuance to the 21st. So, uh, Ms. Turnbull, anything to add to that? Uh, not at this time. I have not heard any updates from Mr. Kozar in terms of his um, his progress. Um, I so as far as I'm aware, there's not an update there. Um, okay. All right. And then, so um, Ms. Lawrence, the request is to set the matter over to the 21st to review the status of Mr. Kozar's progress with a variety of services. Uh, do you have any concerns or questions about that request? Uh, no. Okay. And, and Mr. Kozar, do you have any concerns or questions about that request to set over to the 21st? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay, and I think last last time we were here back in early January, um, there was information that Mr. Kozar was going to be filing, including an updated domestic violence treatment uh, update from the provider and also information related to a parenting class and that that was to be shared with all parties, including Ms. Turnbull. Uh, so Mr. Kozar, I, I didn't see anything in the file uh, for today's hearing. Um, so that will give you additional time to make sure that that information is filed. And that's really important that it is filed uh, prior to the 21st. So we'll look forward to any any updates that you have at that time. Do you have any questions about that, Mr. Kozar? Um, I only have, my only question is, so yesterday I finally got my consultation for the 36 week program. So today um, I, I'm able to go out and do all the paperwork and get her all started and scheduled finally. but. Um, I was trying to reach out to Olivia several times. I didn't really hear back from her about the two-step parenting program I'm supposed to do. But last I heard, she said uh, she said she wasn't going to get back to me until I have already started my 36, 36 week program, and that's going well. So I'm not sure why that's being held off. But I was hoping to get it all started together if I could. But I just didn't know where to start with the the parenting program classes and whatnot. So from at least from the court's uh, perspective, uh, it's better to have information filed, even if there is not all coming in at once. Uh, so if there's updates from any of the different services, uh, the court needs to know about those. Uh, so otherwise, it looks like nothing's happening. So uh, so if you want information that, that portrays uh, your your progress in a particular service, then you need to file something. Uh, so we will set the matter over to the 21st of February for that to be filed. Ms. Turnbull, do you have any final questions? No, thank you, Your Honor. Okay, we'll set this matter to the 21st of February at, at 9 a.m. and we'll look forward to those updates from Mr. Kozar. Jonathan Butcher, are you on the line? Thank you. Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay, welcome, sir. Uh, and Ms. D. Stillwell, are you on the line? I'm here, Your Honor. Okay, welcome. All right, uh, so a couple of different things. Uh, one, we're reviewing, uh, we're looking at child support worksheets and orders for the presentation. We're also looking at a guardian ad litem report update and then also motion for contempt and a motion to change parenting plan, which is kind of uh, tied up in all of this. So, Ms. Turnbull, do you want to go first with just uh, your perspective? Yes, um, I have had a chance to meet with both um, Mr. Butcher and Ms. Stillwell and um, did have done a walkthrough of her home, which has been one of the concerns uh, previously and um, the state of her home. And I. Um, one of the concerns um, for Mr. Butcher is the um, that one of the children has had increasing in anxiety and has been um, eating inanimate objects and it was hospitalized um, last year um, because she was eating her hair. And that was, um, she was spent three weeks in the hospital because of that. And um, the concern from the therapist is that the anxiety that uh, has, that, you know, that's causing this is, um, you know, the, those issues are surrounding mom's home. And so uh, I am in the process of trying to reach the therapist and get the medical records. Um, and I will be speaking with the children. I have not been able to do so yet, but um, I do have some concerns about mom's home. Um, and, you know, the, the state of mom's home. And that has been an ongoing kind of roller coaster over the years. Uh, I am. I do think it's important for the children to have some contact with mom, but I'm concerned that um, maybe overnights there's the bedding, the things, you know, the clutter that are on the beds. They don't have a, you know, a reasonable place to sleep. Um, the house isn't particularly clean. 
and I'm concerned, you know, about the safety and, and you know, the sanitariness of the helm. Okay, so it sounds like you've done some some investigation. It sounds like there's additional information that you'll be gathering and then pr uh, preparing for your report. Do you have, I looked at the appoint, uh, order appointing guardian ad litem. It didn't necessarily give a specific date for any any interim reports or final reports other than just the standard six, at least 60 days prior to trial. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have a general idea of what you're kind of shooting for? Uh, I would say probably six to eight weeks from now. Okay. All right, thanks. Okay, um, so I don't think we're going to really touch much more about, talk more about the guardian ad litem uh, update, other than that she'll, she's gathering additional information, and then we'll be presenting that information to all parties in written form, and we'll review that at a future date. I, I want to pivot from that and ask uh, uh, the parties, Mr. Mr. Butcher and, and Ms. Stilwell, related to child support. So I saw that Mr. Butcher uh, filed a child support worksheet. Uh, but I did not see a proposed child support order, so I'll just double check with Mr. Mr. Butcher if you if you had filed that. Uh, yeah, that should have been turned in. Okay, let me let me double check again. When I looked this uh, last night and today, I did I, I saw the worksheet. So let me just double check again. I, I certainly could have overlooked that. So I do I see the child support worksheet that was filed on the nineteenth of January, um, and I don't see a, pr a proposed order. Um, you know what we could do is that uh, with the child support worksheets, I have that, and then I could I could draft a child support order that corresponds with those figures. Uh, okay, and I, I I can get that filed and send out to the parties. Um, so let me ask um, Mr. Butcher, are you comfortable with that? If I were to do that, yeah, yeah, I'm fine with that. Okay, Ms. Stillwell, do you have any concerns? Yeah, my concern is, is I have one income and I barely make ends meet. How am I supposed to pay my bills when he, and I do support the children, even though they don't live with me, I get them what they need. Okay. But so, it doesn't seem to matter. I wanted to I've ask got you. insurance for the children. He claims that I do not. I've had it since the day they were born. I've got it through my work and through the state. Okay. So, so I'm specifically talking about, and I just want to focus on this just for a moment, is that Mr. Butcher filed a, a, a while ago, not a few weeks ago, we heard the issue of the child support and the court made some findings of net incomes of which uh, Mr. Butcher was asked to create a child support worksheet and child support order. So he filed the child support worksheet with those net incomes that the court found. And then the child support order wasn't wasn't created but uh, or, or proposed. Um, so, Mr. Butcher, did you you said you did create that that child support order in addition to the worksheets? Yeah, I thought that was turned in with it. I will look and see if uh, it got missed. Yeah, and it. I was going to say I never received it. Anything? Okay. Did you receive the the worksheets? Yeah, um, it doesn't include my information, like the inf uh state or health insurance or anything. So I'm going to have to do that as well. Okay. So I think probably what we need to do with the child support order is that it's probably best to have both parties be able to look at the proposed order, just as uh, Ms. Stoll has had, has had opportunity to review Mr. Butcher's proposed worksheets. So Mr. Butcher, could you, would you be willing to uh, resubmit that child support order and then also serve a copy on Ms. Stillwell? Yeah, and I can, can do that. Can you have your wife uh, serve me? Because I don't believe she's supposed to. Oh, yeah, there's there's no issue with a third party serving. It's just but what if it's his wife? There's, there's no issue with that. There's, oh. no there's no issue with that. There's no issue with that. So um, to allow that, Mr. Butcher, when do you think you could, could get that submitted to the court? Um, I should be able to hopefully get that by end of next week. Okay, so submitted by the 15th. And we could have a hearing on the 27th. That would give Ms. Stillwell enough time to, to look at that and review it and have time to submit something. Ms. Stillwell, do you think that would give you enough time if we reviewed it on the 28th? Of what month? Next month or this month? February. Because we have, we have a court date for next month on March 6th. Oh, you already have one on March 6th? Yeah. Okay. I figured it'd just be easier to keep it all together. Sure. Mr. Butcher, would you be comfortable if we just uh, set the, the presentation of the child support order and worksheet to the, to March 6th? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, that's a good suggestion, Ms. Stillwell. Thank you. 
Uh, we'll, we'll set over the presentation of the child support order and worksheets uh, to the 6th of, of March so we can finalize that. Um, then the next item is that there was a motion for contempt uh, filed by um, Ms. Stillwell related to the tax exemptions. And Ms. Uh, Stillwell alleges that Mr. Butcher claimed uh, the the girls, Alex and Lennox, for the year tax years 2022 and 2023. I didn't see a response from Mr. Butcher related to that. Uh, and then she's asking that she's able to claim all four children in tax years 2024 and 2025, or that Mr. Butcher pay back, if there was a finding of contempt, pay back the value of the, the two children that were wrongly claimed. So that's that's the, the claim or contempt motion brought, brought by Ms. Stilwell. Mr. Butcher, did you receive a copy of her motion? I did. We brought that up uh, in court last session when I had the tax forms with me that showed that both uh, myself and my wife only had the two boys on the tax return form. Okay. So somebody somehow claimed the two girls. I was not able to claim them. My father did my taxes and he told me somebody claimed the girls. So if he gave the information to somebody else, I don't know. But how was I not able to claim the two girls last year? For and, my taxes. And Ms. well, when you say the last year, you're talking about the tax year no. 2022? Yes. Okay. Not and, this year, but last year. Yeah, not 2023, because that's just Correct. concluded. So are you, so you're saying that in 2021 and tax year, in 2022 tax year, that uh, somebody claimed the girls? Yes, he did claim the girls in 2021, and then somebody else claimed the girls in 2022, but I lost my proof that my dad sent me that somebody else claimed the girls to where I could not claim them for my taxes because I lost all my information on my phone because it reset. I don't know what happened. I had to get a new phone because it went out. So let me ask you, Ms. Stilwell, related to documents supporting uh -huh. your motion, have you contacted the IRS and asked for copies to be sent to you, copies of return? No, so I can contact the IRS about that. Okay. And I didn't know who I needed to talk to about that. Yeah, the, the, the important thing to remember in a motion for contempt is that you're making an allegation that something did or didn't happen. And to substantiate that, generally records are very helpful in this type of situation okay. rather than just he said, she said. And yes, of course. So I'll ask Mr. Butcher, did you have you filed anything in response to that motion for contempt? I know you talked about the the tax records and the like. Did you did you submit any of those records for the court's review? Um, no, I, I know last time when we were at court, you had me hold them up to the camera so you could see them, but that was all we did. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, best practice, you know, is, is, is to file the documents in the court file. So there's a clear record. Um, okay. so I think we probably need to, to hold off on that motion for contempt simply because I, I don't have enough information really from, from either party. It sounds like you both have a fairly clear idea, but having the documentation to support either position, I think would be important to have a clear ruling and a clear idea of what's happening or not happening with the tax exemptions. Um, let me just ask, so we're here at the, you know, the cusp of the tax filing season. It's coming up April 15th for the tax year 2023. Um, as it stands now, there's a there's a con some concern related to uh, past tax tax years and exemptions that have been claimed and there's a, a potential remedy that may involve the 2023 tax year and who gets to claim the children. Uh, so I, I'm thinking about just uh, instructing and ordering the parties uh, not to file their taxes as of yet, but wait until the hearing is completed and then we can make a decision. And I think that would be cleaner because if the parties file, you know, one way or the other claiming exemptions that may, to be, may need to be reversed uh, later after the court takes a look at the motion for contempt and it may not. Uh, but there's some concerns related to uh, filing the 2023 taxes, which may be, have to be adjusted later after the court makes a ruling on the motion for contempt. Okay. So, so I think at this point, I'm ordering the parties not to not to not to file your 2023 taxes until that motion for contempt has been heard. Okay. So I'll do a I'll do a bench order related to that, meaning a bench order is just a fancy way for me to say that I'm drafting an order that says uh, do not uh, file taxes until 2023 taxes until a uh, motion for contempt is ruled on. Okay. And so that's, so, so uh, hopefully 
hopefully from our discussion today, Ms. Stilwell, you'll, you'll obtain quickly the, that information from the IRS related to your motion for contempt. And then also that Mr. Butcher, apparently uh, he has that information um, and can file that with the court and then can also file that child support proposed order. So that so we're coming back on March 6th. I don't know if we'll be able to get all the documents. The IRS is not famous for, for being super fast with things. Uh, so we may look at just uh, setting an additional hearing um, after the March 6th. You know, if we get it by March 6th, fantastic. We can look at those records. So I think we'll continue the motion for contempt to the, the 6th. And if the, the parties are able to submit documents, then we can review it. If not, then we could take a look at it at a new date. Are the party's comfortable if we proceed in that fashion? Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So let's do that. So the, the motion for contempt will be um, set over to the March 6th date. And then I, I, I'll file that uh, that brief order that says don't file. Both parties are, are uh, restrained from filing 2023 taxes until that hearing uh, on contempt has been heard. Okay. Uh, then the next point is that there's Ms. Um, and Ms. Turnbull has addressed this with her initial comments. Ms. Stilwell filed a motion to change or modify a parenting plan in which adequate cause was found by the court back in December, early December. And then shortly thereafter, Ms. Turnbull was appointed. Uh, so that's, I think that's, um, we're gonna hold off on that motion to modify that parenting plan until we hear feedback from uh, Ms., um, Ms. Turnbull, um, which would be in roughly two months or so. So that that, that motion is still pending. So to keep things in, in order, we're gonna set that matter also over to March 6th so we don't lose track of it. That that motion to, to modify a parenting plan will also be continued to March 6th. And we'll just maybe, I don't think we'll have, uh, it'll be ripe at that time, but at least we, we won't lose track of it. So with that said, um, I think we th that addressed the issues that were released on my radar. Uh, so I'll ask Ms. Turnbull, were there any other items that you were thinking would be prudent or were to, to be addressed today? Not today, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you. And Mr. Butcher, same question to you. Um, no, I think that takes care of everything. Okay. Ms. Stilwell, same question to you. No, that's everything. Okay. All right. So we will see everybody on March 6th. Um, we'll have that proposed child support worksheet. and Well, we have the worksheet, and then the order will be sent to Ms. Stilwell and submitted to the court for review. Uh, the contempt motion related to the taxes uh, but he's going to work on uh, submitting, obtaining and submitting those records that are supportive of their respective positions. And then we are continuing the motion to modify the parenting plan to March 6th, uh, where we don't think we'll do much, but at least we'll keep track of it. And so we don't, we don't lose it. So I think that's, that covers things for today. Uh, I appreciate everybody's uh, participation and help. It's uh, very so helpful. Thank you. To see if uh, Buchanan Vigoran is on the line. Yes, your honor. All right. And then just making sure I'm pronouncing your last name correctly. Correctly. Uh, Vigoran. Vigoran. Thank you. Okay, yep. thank you, Vigoran. And then Raven Connolly, are you on the line? Or Raven Kranz, are you on the line? All right, Ms. Fellows, are you on the line too? Your Honor. Okay, great. All right, so we're here for a pretrial hearing in preparation for readiness hearing and trial. Well, the trial is the week of February 26th, so the end of February is the trial. Uh, we have a scheduled for a half day, and then we have a readiness hearing on the 20th of February, which is an important date. Uh, because that's when we'll know specifically what date and time the trial will go out the week of February 26th. Um, so I, I see that Ms. Uh, Connolly, formerly known as Kranz, was absent at the trial setting, uh, and it looks like she's not here. Again, I'll call her name Raven Kranz or Raven Connolly. If you're here, please unmute and state your name. All right, there's no response, and I'm not seeing anybody's Zoom box that has that name or names. I'm also noting that there's nobody in the courtroom. The courtroom is open. Um, so uh, for the pretrial, Mr. Vigoran, uh, a few things to keep in mind um, that uh, you should have your, your witnesses uh, ready to go, kind of timed, have a general idea of how much time you'll need with each particular witness if you're calling witnesses other than yourself, um, because we have a half day is what we're scheduled for. So it's important to be, you know, to kind of plot out how much time you think it'll take to present your case. And then any documents that you might have that you want the court to look at. Uh, generally, that's a, a good idea to have a copy for the court, a copy for uh, Ms. Fellows, and a copy for Ms. Ms. Connolly or Ms. Ms. Franz uh, or Kranz. Uh, so your copy and then three additional copies. 
if you have any for documents, just make sure how those lined up. That's that really helps things go forward more quickly. Do you have any questions on that? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. And then um Ms. Fellows, any any comments or questions or issues to raise at the this pretrial? No. Yeah, since this is about the parenting plan, um my my assumption is that the court will want me to be present. I think that's a fairly good assumption and hopefully and Mr. Vergoin, sometimes what we'll do, since the GALs, there's a lot of demands on their time, we try to call their cases first or get them involved in the case or the trial first and have them just share their information. And then if then they can exit exit there after having given their information. Um, so that's generally the way we try to work it. Certainly, you'd have opportunities to ask questions of her prior to ex exiting. Um, but that's, that's generally the way we, we flow with that. Do you have any questions or concerns about that? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. That sounds good. Um, anything else? Any questions, Mr. Vigoran, um, in res in preparation for the trial? Any questions that you have? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. All right. With that, uh, we'll ca I'll call it good for the pretrial, and then we'll see everybody on the 20th at 11.30 a.m. for to find out what date specifically is the week of the 26th the case will be set. Thank you, Your All Honor. Right. Thank you, Your Honor. Llewellyn's on the line. You. Can you hear me, Mr. Llewellyn? Yes, I can, Your Honor. Okay. Welcome to you. And Ms. Burkett, are you on the line today? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, welcome. And Mr. Lawrence okay. is the guardian of the item and see that he's present. Uh, looks like everybody's here. Okay, let me just, um, I have noted that for today, um, let me just do just a quick procedural review and I think that'll aid it hopefully in the conversation. So back in March of 2020, there's a final parenting plan entered uh, with some limitations on on Mr. Llewellyn, mother was listed as the primary parent with father having residential time on alternating weekends. Uh, and then um, then on November 1st of last year, 2023, there is a adequate cause finding to, to modify the parenting plan. Then the 20th of November, there is a bench order modifying visitation uh, that required uh, no supervision and father had uh, some weekend time, but no overnights. And the mother is to get a uh, SUD evaluation and monthly alcohol testing. And so from, from November 1st, when the adequate cause that allowed a motion to move forward to, to modify the parenting plan, I, ha I don't have any updated information uh, on the status of the case. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at. And I'll just hear from the, maybe Mr. Lawrence, and then we can hear from the parties as to what you think the next steps are or, or what you're asking for, Mr. Lawrence. Yeah, Your Honor, I had a chance uh, I believe it was on Friday of this last week to speak with Shane. And on Saturday, I spoke with Tisana. Um, <clears throat> the visits have gone very well. Um, uh, oh, Shane is awesome. very happy with his time with Abel. Those uh, visits have been in Abel's uh, best interest. He's not had any, any issues. And he looks forward to visiting with his father. Hold on. There's somebody that's not muted. Ms. Davidson? Ms. Davidson, could you mute your phone, please? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, go ahead, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, and when I spoke with Tasana, uh, she indicated as well that those visits had gone very, uh, very well and that there were no issues. Uh, Tasana did provide me with copies of her uh, random uh, substance abuse uh, uh, testing. And it came back negative for, uh, I believe there were seven or eight um, samples that were taken and they were negative each and every time. And I happened to pass those on to Shane so he could see as well. And at this point, um, Shane is asking that he be allowed to have an overnight visit on the weekends that he has able. Uh, so he could have him from 10 o'clock on Saturday morning until six o'clock on Sunday evening. And I spoke to Tasana as to whether or not she was in favor of that. And she felt that it was time to uh, expand his visits. And, and she is uh, not objecting to have overnight visits with Abel. And so that's kind of where we're at. Um, in, in just very briefly, th this case has been going on for almost three years. Uh, Shane has uh, stabilized his mental health issues. He's maintained probably for a year and a half to two years without having any more um, manic episodes. Uh, he's holding a full-time job. He's got his own place and has, has made great strides. Um, Tasana has always been the primary caregiver for Abel, 
she uh, got involved in an accident where she was under the influence and had to do some jail time. And that's why she's providing those um, UAs uh, for us to review. And she has been in total compliance with her, her uh, community supervision as well. And it, it's uh, really kind of uh, heartwarming to see how um, Shane and Tasana are now starting to work together. Um, and, and the child is now being able to spend time with his father. And I would wholeheartedly uh, recommend to the court that he be allowed overnight visits with Shane. Uh, and so he could have him from Saturday at 10 until Sunday at 6. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Um, Ms. Burkett, can I hear from you? Um, yes, um, I totally agree with everything um, Mr. Lawrence has said. Um, I think it is definitely time and Abel looks forward to having his visits every weekend with his dad. Um, I just had one thing that I wanted to ask if Shane would be willing to do, um, maybe like before bed on that Saturday night, maybe have Abel give me a call um, just to just to say goodnight and just to make sure that everything's going well. I would kind of put my mind at ease. But other than that, um, no, I think having an overnight would be good for Abel and for Shane. Thank you. Mr. Llewellyn. I have zero problem with that. I think it's a great idea. Um, I've actually would, been wanting to ask, I don't know if it need to be another court date or what, or if we could hash it out here, really hash out. But um, since I don't see him for two weeks in between visits, I was wondering if we could set up some time that I could speak with him on the phone. It doesn't have to be a whole lot of time or very many times, but if I could talk to him once or twice even throughout the two weeks that we don't see each other, that'd be nice. But if not, I'm super happy with how everything's going. Okay. Thank you. Let, let me clarify. Um, there was, Mr. Lawrence indicated that the parties were in agreement of Mr. Llewellyn having overnight residential time with, with Abel from Saturday at 10 a.m. until Sunday at 6 p.m. And is that every weekend or is that alternating weekends? Alternating. Alternating. Okay. So every other week. Okay. Saturday, 10 a.m. to Sunday... 6 p.m. Okay, that, that's helpful, alternating. And then um, Mr. Llewellyn raised the issue related to uh, phone phone visits on the off weeks or the weeks phone visits. So uh, Ms. Burkett, do you have any input or in input on that? Um, I'm I'm also fine with that. Um, if I'm not sure if you wanted to have like a, a specific day or, or just whenever Abel wants to call or which, whichever works for me, but I think that's a good idea. Okay, Mr. Lawrence. I would agree as well, Your Honor. I think we can leave it to the parties to make the arrangements. Sure. Okay. I, so sometimes it, it's helpful that um, there's kind of a backstop, meaning the court would say that there's two phone calls each week and they happen Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m. However, the parties are free to adjust that. So whatever would work best for your schedules and your child. Uh, and then you can be flexible with with the calls. But it, But if there's ever a question about about when or where, then there's that default backstop that says this is when it happens. Um, so it sounds like you're you're both uh, parenting, co-parenting well uh, now from what Mr. Lawrence has indicated and from what I, I'm hearing here now. Uh, do you have any proposed dates and times that would work best for those phone calls as, as a backstop, recognizing that you're, you're free to uh, deviate from that? But if there's ever a question, then that, that's that's what controls. Um, I'll leave that up to Mr. Llewell, and I get off work at about 2.30 every day, so Abel and I are both free pretty much in the evenings, and I know he works later, so whatever works for him. Mr. Llewell? Um, so I work from 10 to 6.30, Monday through Friday. I'm fine with whenever. I don't want to, by any means, overstep any bounds or make Tessana feel uncomfortable, so if if there's a time that she wants to be the one to initiate texting me and saying, hey, are you free for a call? I'm fine with that. I don't want her pressured in any way, shape, or form of me, like trying to reach out, even if it's to Abel specifically. I just don't want anything to be alarming in any way, shape, or form. So if she wants to decide, I'm happy with that. If we can come to an agreement somehow together, whether it be over the court date right now or um, next visit we see or something, I don't know. But really, I'm universal to it. I'm just happy that I'm allowed this time. Okay. All right. Um, so let, let's do this. I'll, I'll, I'll throw this out there to the parties and you can share, share your thoughts. So 
my thought is every week, Tuesday and Thursday at 7 p.m. for a phone call of, of reasonable length. And of course, the, the parties are free to deviate from that and have two phone calls at different times through the, the, the week. Or, um, But if you can't, just can't agree on those times, then it'd be Tuesday at 7 and Thursday at 7 every week. Yeah, that works for me. Okay. So long. Uh, yeah, that sounds great, Your Honor. Thank you. Okay. So let me let me just ask the parties this. Um, this is the way that I, I want. I, I'm trying to run the, this this particular docket, family law docket, is that um, there's kind of the, this piecemeal parenting plans that kind of be put in place that adjust things one week and adjust things next month. I don't like that. I think it's good to have a finalized parenting plan that is all encompassing and addresses all the issues and it's it's fairly solid and there's reasons not to do that. I recognize that. Um, so I'm fine making this interim adjustment now. However, um, we have that final parenting plan that was entered back in March of 2020. So I, there's this adequate cause finding that was made to modify the parenting plan. And there was one modification on November 20th and we're making another modification today. So what I want to see is filings from, from both parties of how you want this, this parenting plan to be adjusted. What are the specifics? Because I don't have any updated information and things have changed, it sounds like. Um, so what I'm suggesting to the parties, um, if, if you, so I'll, I'll submit that order that allows for the alternating weekend visits, the overnights from Saturday at 10 a.m. to Sunday at 6 p.m. with an alternated weekends with the phone calls two times a week. I'll get that filed. Then um, I'm interested in in kind of putting this adequate cause issue to bed, meaning that there's a motion to modify the parenting plan. And if if what the order I signed today, if that's what you want as a final, you know, as resolu resolving that uh, adequate cause motion, great. If not, if there's something that either of you are wanting to adjust or, or change or keep the same, I, I need to know about that. And I think the best way to approach that would be both parties submitting a proposed parenting plan that addresses all issues within a parenting plan uh, so that we can finalize this adequate cause motion and not have it linger and, and then piecemeal uh, rule on it through for the next four years, which we're not going to do that. So, 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 so I'm, I'm proposing to setting a, a date for a review of your proposed parenting plans. And uh, I'll hear from Mr. Lawrence, if you have some suggestions related to timeframes. Well, your honor, it, if we set it out at least four weeks, that would give us a, a history of the, the visits and how they're going to go. That would, that would only essentially be two visits. Um, and, um, it, it, that may or may not be enough time. Um, I don't know what, what the party's feelings are as to whether or not they're ready to go with a final parenting plan right now or what, but, but in, in my mind, if we could set it out at least 30 days, we'll have um, two overnight visits under our belt uh, to see how it's going and see whether any adjustments need to be made and then come back with a final plan. Okay. Thanks. Ms. Burkett, do you have any input on that? Um, I think that's a good idea to kind of see how it goes. Um, but I, I do think that I am comfortable with how things um, are right now with the every other weekend overnight visit. I would be fine with that being a final parenting plan as well. Mr. Llewellyn, your input as far as timing? Um, with my schedule and everything, this um, every other weekend overnight stays works the best. But I would, however, like to ask for like the uh, holidays, every other holiday and like Christmas breaks and that kind of stuff, like mm -hmm. the full on schedule. Because I, unless it happens to fall on that time, I get left out from all of those and the alternating years would be nice to have. Um, other than that, I'm fine with how things are going, but I would like to settle that. Okay. All right. And certainly Ms. Burkett would have input on that, on that too, as far as the holidays and the like. So let, let's do this. Let's, let's choose a date. There's going to be probably two or three overnight visits that are going to occur. I, I think probably having three would be, would be good, maybe even four. So I'm, I'm thinking if today's the seventh, roughly we're going to have two visits for Mr. Llewellyn's going to have two visits each month. Uh, so I'd like to have, a review on the 3rd of April. The 3rd of April will be the time frame which we will review how those visits have gone. And then we'll also review your proposed parenting plans uh, where, you know, Mr. Llewellyn had talked about what, what he is desirous to have. And Ms. Burkett, you can certainly file your proposed parenting plan with what you feel is desirous 
to um, for the parenting plan. And then we can finalize that adequate cause motion, modifying the parenting plan and modify it and have some direction and not keep coming back to court. That sounds good. Is that yeah. work for you, all parties, Mr. Lawrence, the April 3rd at 9 a.m.? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. So I'd encourage the parties to submit your proposed parenting plans. If you could uh, submit them no later than the, the 20, 22nd of March, uh, that'll be submitted and they can be uploaded and I'll have time to review those. Okay. And then make sure you uh, share your proposed parenting plan with the other parent and also okay. Mr. and with and Mr. Lawrence. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, do does either or any party have any questions or or questions? Nope. I think I'm good. There was one other one that I wanted, but it can I think I'll be done during the the paperwork that's submitted is um, academics. I'd like to be able to sit in on separate conferences of Ables and have access to his to his grades and teachers and that kind of stuff. Okay. In the, the parenting plan that was filed in March of 2020, uh, does it address that? It looks like it's limited. School and education is, is limited to to Ms. Ms. Bur Burkett. So if that's something you're looking at uh, changing, um, Mr. Llewellyn, then that's something in your proposed parenting plan that you, would, you can submit. Um, and both parties would be free to also to submit declarations uh, supporting your particular request that you're making in your parenting plan, because I'll have the parenting plan. I was like, okay, that's what they want. And then in your declarations, uh, then you can specify or provide support why you think that's a good idea. And that's in the best interest of the child. Okay. So Mr. Sure. Well, specifically to that point, then uh, you can address that in your proposed parenting plan and, and also in your declaration. And we'll hear that on April 3rd. That's perfect. Thank you, Your Honor. Okay. I think that uh, that covers things for today. I appreciate everybody's input. Um, we'll uh, adjourn and reconvene on the third of third of April at nine a.m. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Ashley Becerra, are you on the line? Okay. Not hearing a response from Ashley Becerra. I'll ask if Joseph Becerra is on the line. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, welcome, Mr. Becerra, and Mr. Lawrence is here. Um, again, Ashley Becerra, if you're here, please make sure you're unmuted and state your name. At this point, I haven't. Uh, haven't heard your your voice. Can, can you hear me? Yeah, Joseph is there. I can hear you perfectly. Oh, I okay. you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thank you. Um, and then Ashley Becerra, if you're here, state your name. Okay. I'm not hearing her and not seeing her on the Zoom. Don't see a name that's representative or close to that name. And the courtroom, there's no persons other than myself and the, the court clerk. So procedurally, there was a parenting plan, temporary parenting plan signed on January 10th of this year and it required Mr. Becerra to get a psychosexual evaluation and treatment. And we're here to see what progress has been made. Mr. Lawrence, are you aware of any progress? Your Honor, I, I checked uh, Odyssey this morning to see if Mr. Becerra had filed um, that evaluation. I, I found nothing. Uh, I've heard nothing from Mr. Becerra. And so I assume that he's still in process. Okay, thank you. Mr. Becerra, uh, any, any updates that you could share? I'm not going to be able to afford that. It's over a thousand dollars. I don't have that kind of money. I'm paying Ashley child support, um, not by ordered, but her and I agreeing, uh, and all my bills and rent and stuff to you know keep myself housed. And obviously, I'm working. I'm at work right now, so um, I just don't. I don't see it feasible to be able to pay for that. Okay. All right, uh, thank you for that input. So, um, so on page uh, the temporary parenting plan filed on January tenth, two thousand twenty-four, uh, it says that Mr. Becerra must be evaluated for psychosexual evaluation and start and comply with treatment, including an evaluation and a polygraph as required by the evaluator, and he he's responsible for payment of the same. And we've heard from Mr. Becerra that that's a very much a strain on his finances. Um, and right now, the parenting time is supervised um, by Ms. Medina. My sister. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And that's Saturdays for three hours, starting at eight a.m. Eight a.m. and ending at eleven a.m. Yep. Okay. So this this is my take on, on that. Um, is that one that there's supervised visitation for the child? And the child is protected by that supervisor. Second point is that. Uh, I recognize evaluations are very expensive and money's not growing on trees and it's difficult. Um, so if there's to be ever to be any expansion from that, that current parenting plan, that psychosexual evaluation would have to be completed. 
Uh, otherwise, without that, there's not going to be any movement, and and that's where it will stay. So I understand. I I figured that's probably what it's going to be. Um, yeah. eventually, I will try and I will come back to court about it. Okay. But I mean, if you guys want to put that as the final, that's fine for now. I I understand. I I do, but you know, until I make good good money, then it's kind of hard. And I'll take what I get with him. Honestly, he enjoys it all the time. She she's worked with me. There was a day that I I think I asked you about getting makeup time. And she did it out of her own um, and gave me an extra three hours. Okay. So I, I did appreciate that for her. So I'm I'm making sure I pay her um, every month also because he is my responsibility financially. So okay. right. I do okay. understand. <laughs> yeah. So I think at this point, uh, w once you get the evaluation of the treatment, that the, uh, then you could note it up for a motion to to expand visitation or change the, the, the residential time. Uh, but until that time, the, the temporary parenting plan of January 10th uh, remains. Mr. Lawrence, any comments on that? No, Your Honor, that would have been my recommendation. Okay, all right. <clears throat> and so at this point, uh, I, I'm, I'm not gonna be setting any additional hearings uh, that uh, will allow Mr. Becerra to proceed uh, to get that uh, psychosexual evaluation when in time and monies allow, otherwise the, the, the continued supervision of the child and the visits will, will be in place. All right, thank you. That'll conclude today's hearing. Um, your, your Honor? Yes, sir. Um, I did have a question. Um, is it just going to be a temporary until I can get that, or is it going to be set in permanent? Yeah, that's a good question. Right now, that January 10th, 2024 temporary parenting plan is a, is a temporary parenting plan. Uh, so the case is still, it's not resolved. Um, so oftentimes what will happen, uh, temporary parenting plans can last for months or years. Um, and that's fine for some people. Um, having a final parenting plan is is helpful um, in that it resolves the case and that the, the issue of the controversy or you know different viewpoints related to parenting plans. Um, so at this point, I, I'm not gonna push it one way or the other. I mean, we could set it for a trial, a trial date, note it up for a trial and then have a final parenting plan. Uh, however, uh, I don't know if there'd be much of a difference. It could be, uh, but without that psychosexual evaluation uh, there's some unresolved issues that uh, would would remain at trial, um, and that m may or may not uh, turn out in the, a way one party or the other party may want. So, um, kind of a long-winded answer. I kind of wanted to just kind of get it over with because I, I keep missing stuff, and and mm -hmm. I'm I, so if we could, I mean, push it along, and then I know that I can always revisit eventually, um, but. Yeah, I've just been dragging on, and I don't know. Yeah, I mean, how, if, yeah. yeah. If if you're interested in moving the case along, you you could note it up onto what's called the universal trial setting docket. That's just a docket okay. where you say, "Hey, I, I want to I want to have a trial on this parenting plan," and you'd give notice to the Mr. Lawrence and also to Ms. Becerra, giving them notice on this is the date that we're going to go to court to choose a date uh, in the future for for a trial to to get a final parenting plan. Okay. That's one option. Another option is to talk to the other party and come to some type of an agreement related to a final parenting plan. You'd have to run that by Mr. Lawrence. And uh, if he's in agreement and all parties are in agreement, then it could be presented to the court for signature. Um, if there's not agreement, then you could note it up for that universal trial setting docket. Okay. That sounds good. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Mr. Lawrence, anything to add to that? No, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Very good. All right. Uh, so with that uh, bit of direction, we'll uh, let things uh, stay the, where they're at, and then Mr. Becerra can make some decisions on where he wants to go. I'll ask if okay. the parties Thank are you, present. Uh, right, Alyssa thanks. Gutierrez, are you on the line? All right. If you're here, Ms. Ms. Gutierrez, if you'll please unmute your phone and state your name. Not hearing a response. There's nobody in the courtroom other than the court clerk and myself. Uh, and then I'm uh, here. And I'll ask if Francisco Gutierrez is present. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep, I can. Thank you. Welcome, Mr. Gutierrez. We're here to review Mr. Gutierrez's uh, treatment. Uh, looks like there is a parenting plan issued back in June of 2022. Uh, and then there is a petition to modify the parenting plan by Mr. Gutierrez filed in uh, September of last year. Uh, Ms. Gutierrez responded to that. And back in October 4th, there's a court ruling ah. that indicated there is no change to the visitation until Mr. Gutierrez complied with treatment. 
court ruled on November 1st, it was reserved, reserved or hold, was holding off on making a ruling on the parenting plan, but did make a finding of adequate cause. And then back in December, late December, when we were in hearing, Mr. Gutierrez uh, represented that he would be starting treatment that very day. And then on the 24th of January of this year, uh, we had not yet received any uh, updated proof of Mr. Gutierrez's compliance with his substance use disorder treatment. And the court indicated that it, it was interested in having some type of letter from the treatment provider uh, addressing compliance of Mr. Gutierrez. Uh, so I'll, I'll look to, to Mr. Lawrence first and then to Mr. Gutierrez for updates related to uh, compliance with that SED treatment. Your Honor, I spoke with Mr. Gutierrez uh, last week uh, by telephone. He wanted to know what needed to be provided for today's hearing. And I indicated to him that the court was interested in seeing his progress in substance abuse treatment. So he said he was going to be uh, meeting with his counselor. Uh, yesterday, I received a voicemail from um, his uh, substance abuse counselor at Kaiser, uh, leaving a message for me to contact her. Uh, I did. I left a voicemail for her, and we seem to be playing telephone tag, and I haven't seen anything in writing, and I haven't had an opportunity to speak with his counselor. Okay. Thanks. Mr. Gutierrez? Um. Yeah, can you hear me? Sorry, I don't know if I mute or unmute this thing. Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you clearly. Uh, well, I, I've i been doing the counseling sessions, like, and following by the evaluation, like, uh, I've been asked to. Um, I know the last week, it was a little, it was on my part, on my end, it was late for me to turn in a, um, a letter that I submit to Mr. Lawrence about my, what I've been doing and how things are have been go going for me. Um, and I, uh, yesterday I met up with my counselor again and I asked her for what Mr. Lawrence asked about a letter of my progress and how things have been going. And uh, all she said, um, I just need to speak with him. So, and that was the end of, uh, at the end of that conversation that I had with my counselor yesterday. Okay. All right. So just going back to <clears throat> Mr. Gutierrez, you filed a motion to modify the parenting plan and adequate cause was found on that, but we've kind of been stalled uh, waiting to get an updated information related to your treatment compliance. Uh, usually the best information is written documentation. Uh, treatment providers do that on regularly. That's not uncommon <clears throat> that they provide written documentation uh, stating how a person's doing in, in their treatment, what progress they're making or any difficulties that they're having and that's submitted and filed with the court. Uh, so once we have that information related to your treatment compliance, uh, then we can look at your motion to modify the parenting plan. But until we have that information, I'm not gonna look at your motion to modify the parenting plan until we get that information submitted. So I'm gonna leave the, 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 the effort in your hands uh, to get that, get that uh, information submitted and then noted up for a docket. I'm not gonna continue to keep setting it over unless that information's pre present, presented to the court. Do you have any questions on that, Mr. Gutierrez? Yeah, about the parenting plan and stuff like that. Does that still include um, the ch the request to uh, either change or or lower the child support on my behalf? To yeah, that's part of it. Yeah, you, yeah, you filed okay. a petition to change the parenting plan. I think to a fifty fifty plan, and then you are also asking for a child support adjustment. Correct. Okay, because I mean, I'm 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 working on this. I've been working on my. Uh, obtain my kids' visitation, regain that, and uh, I, I still don't have a place of my own to live, so I just would like to have that to be able to provide for them when I when they're on my watch, when they're with me. But uh, I'll keep I'll keep working on this. Um, uh, uh, what do you call it? this counseling? Um, it's proof of compliance. Proof of compliance. That you're you're involved in SUD substance use disorder treatment and how you're doing in in the same. Yes, yes. I'll I'll keep working on that, or or try to obtain the results and and proof and and uh, information for you guys. When when do you think you would have that? My my concern is these things are lingering. This 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 motion is lingering. It was filed in September. And yeah. Yeah. Yes. I, yeah. In November. And now we're all already in February. I, I want to. I want to address that motion. So I'm kind of pulling back from 
uh, leaving it to your hands and I'm going to push it a little bit more. So you can tell me when you can have that letter and when we can have that hearing. Well, uh, that's, that's kind of in the air right now because, uh, uh, counselor, they, they need, she needs to, she likes to, she would like to speak with Mr. Lawrence and that's kind of where it's at. So it sounded like they, it's almost like she wants to talk to him about this whole thing. And I, you know, I, just, I guess I can try to jump in there and get Mr. Lawrence with my counselor to get them to talk to each other. And uh, hopefully that could happen before the end of this week, before Friday. Okay. I, I think it's great that there's, there's verbal communication. Um, however, the courts tend to be kind of written document um, preference. Um, so I need to have your SUD treatment provider submit a letter or write a letter and he or she can send it to you or send it to Mr. Lawrence, giving an updated um, yes. input related to your treatment compliance. Uh, I think it's different when people sit down and write something. They know it's going to be in writing. It's going to be there forever. So I think they take greater care as opposed to just a verbal exchange. So the verbal exchange, I'm not uh, preventing that. I, I think that's fine. But there also has to be a, a written document uh, submitted by your treatment counselor telling me how you're doing or not doing in the SUD treatment. Yes, of course. I I will do my best uh, to try to get Mr. Lawrence and, and my counselor in touch in touch with each other. And uh, hopefully I can obtain a letter either to me or to Lawrence or or so that I can submit something to court and, and move forward with the next step with all of this. Okay. I, I'm proposing a March 6th review date, um, and that's going to be the last time we review it. Either we have the information at that time or we're not moving forward. Um, so make sure that that letter is in by that time, March 6th, the letter from the SUD treatment provider telling me how you are or not doing in your SUD uh, treatment. I'm assuming you're doing well and you're compliant, but I just need to have that in writing. And if your therapist wants to speak with Mr. Lawrence, that's fine too. But we, I definitely need that, that submitted letter and it has to be filed with the court and a copy has to be given to Mr. Lawrence and also to uh, Ms. Gutierrez. March 6th, you said? March 6th at 9 a.m. Okay. Does that date work for you, Mr. Lawrence? Yes. Any concerns with that, that course laid out? Nope. Okay. All right. Very good. So we will see everybody March 6th. So I look forward to receiving that letter from the therapist and we'll see everybody then. Thank and you, Ron. I'll call out Thank those you. names. I have Monique O'Brien. Are you on the line today? Yes, I'm present. Okay. Well, welcome to you, Ms. O'Brien. <clears throat> Brandon James, are you on the line? Yes, sir. Okay. Welcome to you, sir. All right. Uh, so we're, and then I believe Ms. Corey is the assigned guardian ad litem. Uh, Ms. Corey, are you on the line today? I am, Your Honor. Thank you for your patience. I, I sorry I didn't get to your case earlier. Um, so it looks like uh, just procedurally, historically, we have Ms. Corey was appointed back in November, early November of last year. And then we had a hearing on the 3rd of January. And the <laughs> review was to be had. And we changed the dates a little bit and moved. So somebody is speaking and they're not muted. So I need you to mute your phones <laughs> actively on this call. All right, looks like it's rectified. So we changed, changed the dates as far as the report. So interim review is to be today and then the final review, March 20th. And at the hearing in early January, uh, Mr. James had not yet got the intake paperwork to, to Ms. Corey and was working on setting up a meeting and I'm not sure if that went through and uh, if there's any updates. So I'll start from Ms. Corey, maybe give me a brief overview where, you, where you're at with the case and then we'll go from there. Yes, um, I since we last met, I have been able to visit uh, Mr. James in his home. Um, Ms. O'Brien has provided the court with proof of address uh, that she's residing uh, at her grandparents' address in Kelso. Mr. James uh, gave me some information from social media that kind of sort of looked like uh, Ms. O'Brien might be back in St. Helens. When I spoke with her about that, she said that she does stay there sometimes. Um, we have not yet gotten any progress on the mental health evaluation, which I believe is key in this case. And um, who's that evaluation for? 
Ms. O'Brien. Thank you. Um, and um, some concerns um, about the child being in daycare for 40 hours a week. Um, dad works part time and his girlfriend works at the daycare where uh, the child is enrolled. And um, it, it just it, it feels like maybe a little a little too much daycare is, is happening there. Um, I also think that at this time, um, we should attempt to go to supervised visits for mom, either uh, at her parents' home or at a professionally supervised uh, facility. Um, and that's about where I am right now. Okay, thank you. Ms. Um, I'll, I'll hear first from Mr. James. That information that the guardian ad litem shared this morning, I, had you heard any of that information or is there any of that information that's new to you? Yeah, so since our in-person meeting it has been brought to my attention that the last time that Monique was at her grandpa's house was over a month ago. And that was just to get some of her stuff and then she left again. Okay. And then, so the guardian ad litem is, is recommending that there be visitations for Ms. O'Brien, either at the grand, grandparents' home, her parents, or a professionally supervised facility. Do you have any input on that? I would like to wait until we get that mental health evaluation done first. Um, as far as the grandparents go, I'm not sure if they're on board with having it done at their house at this time. And they have also told me that she hasn't really been in contact with them lately. All right. Thank you, Mr. James. Ms. Ms. Corey, do you, have you been in contact with the, the grandparents of the child? I have not. Okay. Um, and, and that is why I said uh, supervised either with the grandparents or professionally supervised. But I think it's imperative that um, this, this uh, very young child has only been getting telephone visits from mom for quite some time. I think it's imperative that we reintroduce them in a safe environment. How old's the child? Uh, Roughly. Two and a half. She'll be three in April. She'll be three in April. Okay. Yeah, Ms. Corey, did you have a proposed <laughs> amount of time or frequency of the supervised visit? Um, I would say up to twice a week, three hour visits. All right, thank you. Thank you. Ms. O'Brien, uh, your input, please. Um, well, so I can get the mental health evaluation, but it has to be ordered through the court before I can get that done. That's um, so you're but, saying that before you can get the mental health evaluation, it has, there has to be an order from the court requiring that? Yeah. Okay. I have started seeing a mental health professional, but I haven't been able to get the evaluation done due to it not being court ordered. Okay. Okay, I, I think I, I can help with that. I could draft an order uh, stating requiring Ms. Ms. O'Brien to obtain that evaluation and have the evaluator provide us the evaluation and recommend a treatment thereafter. I think we can do that. We'll, we'll take care of that. Um, and then Ms. Corey is recommending supervised visitations either by your, your parents or a professionally uh, professional uh, professional supervisor. Do you have any input on that? Um, that when we spoke this morning, I had told her that that's what I was looking for at this point. Okay. So the one thing that I, I don't really know is kind of where the grandparents of the child are as far as providing supervi supervision of of the visits. Um, and without that input, I, I'm, I think I'm going to default to a professional supervisor. Professional supervisors charge money, um, and it's mm -hmm. usually not cheap. Uh, so that's where I'm leaning to requiring that. So ordering a mental health evaluation, I'll, I'll file that order. Uh, and then uh, I would also file an order that allows for the professional supervision uh, for up to twice a week for three hours per per visit. So that's kind of the the, the kind of the stop stopgap measure that I, I think is sounds sounds appropriate at this point in time. Um, any concerns related to, to that direction, Mr. James? Um, so when would that supervision, supervised visit start and where would that happen? Yeah, 
I don't know where uh, a lot of the super professional supervisors facilities are located. I know that there's one or two here in the Longview Kelso area. Um, so I, I would assume it'd be in the Longview Kelso area. Um, and then it, I think it could start as, as soon as it, it can be established a relationship uh, with that supervising agency. Uh, we could start as early as, as this week, uh, I guess, to give it a, just a fine point. Uh, we could just so it's clear for everybody that the visits uh, that would start on the 12th. So we'll just, just do say that the 12th of February. I'll allow everybody to kind of get organized and get that get that those visits set up. Okay. Other questions, Mr. James? Nope. Okay. Ms. Corey, further input? Uh, nothing at this time. Okay. Ms. O'Brien, anything else from you? No. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll. I'll, um, I'll draft an order related to the starting of visitation, supervised visitation. Uh, it can start as early as February 12th. It'll be for up to two times per week for up to three hours per visit, and it'll be uh, through a professional supervisor. So thank you. I appreciate the updates. And um, any, I'll get that filed, and the party can look at that and uh, digest it, and we'll just leave it at that. And then the next hearing would be on, I think it's on March 20th, but that's, I think that's already been noted. So it would be back on the 20th. Okay. Great. Well, that'll conclude things for today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I see Mr. Thank you. Sunderland is present. Can you hear me, Mr. Sunderland? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. Welcome to you. And then Nicole Tomlinson, are you on the line? Yes, I am here. Okay. Welcome to you, Ms. Tomlinson. Thank you. Today for a, a, a motion brought by Mr. Sunderland. It's a motion for temporary orders. Looks like uh, Mr. Sunderland served Ms. Tomlinson on January 7th, 2024, with the personal service of the motion for the temporary family law order, a parenting plan, um, information related to the parenting plan, and also some exhibits. Prior to that, back in September, um, Ms. Tomlinson filed what's called a, a joinder which basically she's agreeing with what Mr. Sunderland petitioned for. However, she asked for notice about any hearing that's happening. Um, and so, um, so that's kind of where we're at. So from the stance of things is that if Mr. Sunderland's proposal is the same as it was back in September, that Ms. Tomlinson, from what you said, as far as the joinder, you're, you're in agreement with what he's asking for but I, I, I'm not sure about that. So I wanted to ask you where you stand on his proposal. Um, when we signed the joinder in September, um, it was very simple and cut and dried. Um, I'm just wanting to see my daughter. I wanted to have her four weeks during the summer and four weeks during the school year. Um, and um, it's all changed and become very intense. And um, I mean, I agree with him. I can, I can do what you know, he needs to be done to have her feel safe. You know, I want to be, I'm a, you know, I'm a good mom and I love her dearly. And I just, um, I want him to know she's safe. You know, I want her to be safe. So, you know. <laughs> okay. So let, let me ask, so Mr. Sunderland, you filed um, earlier on in the case, let me just get to it, a proposed parenting plan in, on July 27th of 2023. And that's that's the one proposed parenting plan that I see that has been filed. Do you, are there others that you filed? I yeah. filed I filed one that was pretty broad because Miss um, Tomlinson has moved uh, a couple times, and so I was um, unsure about the exact you know um, days, times, all that. But um, basically. Um, I'm I'm in agreement with the four weeks uh, during the school year and four weeks during the summer as long as she can pass a a UA. That's that's what I'm asking. Okay. All right. So <clears throat> so this is kind of where I'm at with the case is that there is a, a proposed order parenting plan order that was submitted by Mr. Sunderland back in late July of last year. Uh, by all accounts, Ms. Uh, Tomlinson was aware of that. She agreed with it. However, she wanted to have notice related to any activity happening in the case. Uh, so since that time, 
Uh, that's the only proposed parenting plan that I that's been submitted. And it, the way it stands now is that it's a 50-50 plan. It says, um, Mr. Sundan wrote, I wish to have Layla Thursday, 5 p.m. to Sunday at 5 p.m. plus three full weeks during the summer that Nicole can choose and Nicole has her the rest of the time. So Joel, three days per week and three weeks in the summer and Nicole, four days per week. That's That's the proposed order. It sounds like the four weeks of summer <clears throat> is a change and that's something different. And it sounds like the parties aren't too far, <clears throat> excuse me, aren't too far apart um, related to the parenting plan. Uh, so right now I don't have a an order that I can sign off on. So if the parties are in agreement with a, a proposed parenting plan with maybe some tweaks of that July 2023 parenting plan, that could be submitted to the court with both signatures and it could be signed and then that becomes the the, the parenting plan on the case. So uh, let me ask your your input, Mr. Sunderland. Do you think that's uh, something that through discussions with Ms. Tomlinson, there could be some type some type of an agreement, or do you think it's going to have to be sorted out at, at a hearing? I I think that we can come to agreement. Um, the only problem is is that uh, Nicole moved to Eugene, Oregon, right as we were getting that plan finalized, right. and I then motioned for a a new temporary parenting plan. I, I filed that. I'm not sure why that's not on record. Yeah. Um, did you file a new motion or just uh, do what's called a docket notice where you say you want to have it heard in court? I, I did file a new motion. Yeah. Okay. So let me take a look, see if I can find that. Cause that would be important to know. Um, yeah. She's also received that, that new motion as well. Right, give me just a moment. So I, I see what you're talking about, Mr. Sunderland. On, on December 8th, you filed a motion for temporary temporary or family law order. So in that, um, you indicate that you want Layla to be part of the, the orders, um, and you're asking that you approve a parenting plan that's proposed by you. And the only parenting plan that I see that was submitted was that one from back in July. I don't see a new one that's been submitted. Do you, did you recall submitting one? Yeah, yeah. In, Absolutely. In Is that right? In December, you submitted one. Yes, I did. Yeah, I. Uh, so I'm just going yeah. through the files here. Uh, see if I can see. It. File Superior Court, December eighth, twenty twenty three, Calais County. Stacy Mickelberg's clerk, Your Honor. Okay, so I'm looking. I'll, I'll tell you what I, I have here. So on December eighth, I see that there's the motion for a temporary family law order. Oh, okay. So we just need to stop for a second. Our recording system just crashed. And so we just need to restart it. So let's pause for a second. Once it's up and going, I'll let you know. It won't, won't take too long. Good to go. All right. So we're just looking for that that proposed parenting plan that Mr. Sunderland was indicate, indicating that he had filed. So on December 8th, I see the motion for a temporary order. Um, with that, there's some requests and it's kind of a checkbox and there's not a lot of information, but it says, hey, this is, this is what I want. Then on December 8th, I see a information for a temporary parenting plan, which talks about the child's name, the parents, uh, talks about some answers describing your involvement with the children, scheduling, schedules, work schedules, uh, some other information related to uh, Ms. Tomlinson's status and her, and then the child's schedule and some other concerns that he has. So I have that. And I see a, a docket notice that was filed on December 8th, noting it for hearing on January 3rd. On January, pardon me, on December 21st, there are some uh, letters submitted in support of Mr. Sunderland and some pictures of the daughter and some academic awards and some text messages and uh, some uh, letters written by individuals. December 28th, uh, there is additional documents filed by Mr. Sunderland, uh, text, mess te text message screenshots. Um, <laughs> and then on January 5th, there is attempted service and there is a statement filed by Mr. Sunderland uh, by Martin Fenimore. And so those are the documents I have. So according to the, the official file, there's there's no proposed parenting plan other than the one filed in July. Okay. So so you, you've made the motion for a temporary family or family law order. Um, so if you're asking the court to adopt the, the one in July, um, it sounds like you're not, so you would need to submit a, a new a new proposed parenting plan. Okay. And that would need to be, uh, a copy would need to be given to Ms. Tomlinson so she could review it. 
And then if the parties can, if you come to an agreement, then you could sign both sign off on that document and submit it to the court for signature. Now, if the parties don't agree on that proposed parenting plan, then it could be noted up for a hearing. Ms. Tomlinson, you could certainly submit any information you want the court to know about that proposed parenting plan or what you think would be best for the child. And then we could have a hearing and, and the court would make a decision on the parenting plan. Okay. So Ms. Tomlinson, do you have any questions about, about that? Um, I just want to really work together with Joel, you know, um, I want to come to an agreement and, um, it's important for me to have Leah in my life and I'm pretty much willing to do anything to make that happen. Okay. Mr. Sunderland, do you have any questions? No, I, from the very beginning is all I wanted to do was to draft out a, a parenting plan that, you know, um, keeps, keeps our daughter safe and allows them to be able to see each other in a safe, safe way. You know, I mean, that's, that's the only thing that's been driving me in this. Okay. All right. So I, I guess, I guess ne next steps are, it sounds like, um, they'll need to be a proposed parenting plan filed. Probably Mr. Sunderland probably has it. He'll probably get that filed fairly quickly. Um, and copy given to Ms. Tomlinson, copy filed with the court. And then if the parties agree on it, then it can be signed by both parties and submitted to the court for signature. If the parties don't agree on it, then uh, Ms. Tomlinson, you could submit information you feel is important related to the uh, your proposed parenting plan. So you, if you want, you could submit a proposed parenting plan that you think is in the best interest of the child. And Okay. And then if you want to support it with any declarations, you can do that. And then it can be noted up by either party for for the hearing on that. So first first avenue is to see if there's agreement. If not, then noted, uh, it could be noted up for a hearing and, and both parties can submit information of why they think their parenting plan is in the best interest of the child and we'll have a hearing. And that'll have to be noted up by the party. So you'd have to note it up to make sure that that gets before the court. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Sunderland, any questions on kind of moving forward? No. Okay. And Ms. Tomlinson, any any questions on your end? Um, no. Okay. All right. Well, thank you both for being here. I appreciate the, the efforts you're making to, to make sure your daughter is well taken care of and cared for. Appreciate that. Present. Thank you, Your Honor. Rebecca yes. Cachado, are you thank on the Thank you. Line? Let's see, I yes, see. I am, Your Honor. Okay. All right. Thank you. Welcome to you. And then I'll ask if uh, Keegan Miracle is on the line, Mr. Miracle. Yes, Your Honor, I'm here. Okay, welcome to both of you. Uh, we're here today on uh, Ms. Cacciato's motion for adequate cause to modify a parenting plan. Uh, looks like the final parenting plan was entered back in January of 2022. Uh, then there was a motion for restraining order brought by Ms. Cacciato back in November. That restraining order was denied in de late December. Um, and then there was a, uh, there was a hearing, uh, there was a motion uh, for uh, adequate cause filed on December 4th uh, by Ms. Cacciato. There was a hearing on December 14th where father's visits were suspended. Uh, Mr. Keegan wants to remove the suspended visits. And then we are looking for updated information from CPS. Um, and so I guess kind of a first off, I, I'm interested to hear from either or both parties, if there's any updated information from CPS as to their investigation. And I'll uh, have I, I have not um, heard I anything. haven't. Oh, okay. sorry. Ms. Yes, I've, I've called CPS. Oh, I'm sorry. But who do you want to speak first? No, it's okay. It's just, it's, it's the Zoom delay thing. So Ms. Cachado, go ahead and we'll hear from Mr. Miracle. Um, yes, I've, I've, left, I've left a CPS or a caseworker a couple voice messages, and I haven't heard back from her. Um, I have heard back from the detective on the case, though. Okay, and uh, what does the de detective say? Um, all the evidence has moved up to the prosecutor um, in Clark County, um, so there, there are possible charges pending. Okay, so the information, the case has been submitted to the prosecutor for review at this point, and no charging decisions have been made as of yet. Correct. The CPS case is still open, though, as, as far as I know. I haven't received any letters or anything saying it was closed. Okay. Mr. Miracle, any, what, what's, your, what's your input on this? 
Um, I really don't have any input on it. Um, I haven't seen any information or I haven't heard anything from CPS or anything about the uh, investigation. Okay. All right. Um... So there's there's allegations related to the bruising of the child, and which is the subject of the CPS investigation, and also uh, apparently the the police investigation uh, through Clark County. There's a, a, a motion to uh, modify the parenting plan uh, brought by I believe Ms. Uh, Ms. Casciato to uh, not allow any visitation for for Mister, and that was. Uh, basically granted on on December 14th, uh, suspending dad's visits. Um, so Mr. Mr. Miracle submitted information uh, from a variety of parties uh, talking about a family gathering over Thanksgiving and the boys sliding on stomach downstairs, jumping around. Um, and so there's, um, that's kind of where we're at. So uh, I'm just kind of curious from from the parties. We've got this motion for adequate cause to modify the parenting plan. We don't have a lot of new information. Uh, we don't we haven't heard anything from CPS. We uh, really don't know what's going to happen with any potential criminal charges or, or not. Uh, so I, I'm not sure if we're here prematurely to make any decisions at this point. But I'm certainly open to hear from the parties if you have any particular concerns or or requests. So, Mr. Miracle, maybe we can start with you and then hear from Ms. Casciato. Uh, yes, sir. So, um, uh, I guess the entire uh, reason for this case is the bruises on his hips and a uh, couple slight bruises in other places. Um, I, I myself had explained to Rebecca or tried to explain to Rebecca how those happened. Um, oh, Mr. Miracle, before you go further, I just didn't need to. I apologize. I just need to interrupt. Since it sounds like there's an active investigation, I just want to just give you a heads up and a warning that you know everything that's said in this courtroom is recorded, um, and you know since there's an open investigation, that anything that you say about the case, uh, about the investigation, what did happen, what didn't happen, could be used against you. And just keep in mind that you may think something is fairly innocuous and not a big deal as it relates to any allegations. Uh, uh, however, somebody with a different colored uh, colored lenses may view your statements in a completely different way. And so just want to make sure that you're aware of that right not to self-incriminate, that you have the right uh, to, to not say anything about the case. So I just want to make uh, sure that was clear. Do you have any questions about that? Uh, no, sir. All right. Well, I guess uh, with that said, um, I believe everything was explained in my declaration as well as uh, my aunts and my uh, sister-in-laws. Uh, my aunt currently works for the Department of Corrections with the top secret security clearance. Um, my uh, sister-in-law has been uh, work has uh, been working for uh, in the child care health in industry for I'd like to say almost ten years. Um, and I mean nothing. There's I've never abused my uh, child at all in any which way, shape, or form. And I uh, he has had bruises on so many multiple occasions, like coming from his mom's and going to his mom's, and it's. He's a very active kid and he bruises easily. And this is something that's been, we've gone over multiple times. He has low iron levels, which attribu attributes to his, uh, his ability to eat, uh, be easily bruised. And he can bruise himself by just like simply knocking into, into a table or like bumping into a chair or something like that. Um, and it's, I don't feel that there's any need for this, uh, court case at all. They were, I feel like this is just a huge waste of time. Um, this is not the first time that they've thrown accusations my way, and it's not going to be the first time that it, it all gets unfounded again. Thank They're you. definitely... How, can I ask how old... Remind me how old the, the, the son is. Uh, he's five. Five years old. Okay. He's five years old. Right. Okay. I, 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 I interrupted Mr. Miracle. If you had other things to say, I'm, I'm listening. Oh, no. I... I I guess I don't have anything else. I'm just wanting to know when I'm going to be able to get my son back. Okay. Thank you. Um, Ms. Casciato. Just looking. Um, yes. My, my child is the one who said his father. Hit. Um, those are, those weren't words out of my mouth. They were words from the child. Um, his story has never changed to this day. 
Um, he still tells me how dad punches him. Dad's super mean to him. Um, I, I've had concerns of child abuse for the last four years going on. Um, my, my son, he doesn't get bruises like that in my care ever. Um, I have started him in counseling. He's been having signs of PTSD. He's been having nightmares. Um, he's been having some a little bit of aggressive behaviors. He's scared to go back to his dad's. He's telling me all the time how dad scares him. He doesn't want to go there. Um, these are words from my child's mouth. Um, kids don't generally make those things up. Um, a child expert who was a child abuse assessment es expert did write in that letter that these are not from active play. Um, they are likely inflicted injuries. So I'm, I'm very concerned about my child going back to his father's care. Thank you. Did in your communications uh, with uh, CPS, did they provide any time frames or with the law enforcement any time frames presented as far as when they may be wrapping up things? Um, I do not have any time for. I've been trying to get a hold of the CPS worker for the last few weeks. I've left her multiple voice messages. I haven't heard anything back from her. Um, and I, the police said they weren't sure of how long. They said sometimes they take a while. They, they said cases from 2021 are just now going to trial. Um, so I don't know. I have no idea for how backlogged they are or how their process works. I have, I have no idea. Okay, thanks. Mr. Merkel, any updates on time frames on, on your end? Um, I have not heard anything about any time frames at all. Okay, okay. Hmm. There's a couple considerations that I, I'm, I'm weighing. Uh, one is there's, there's bruising. Uh, both parties have explanations as to how that occurred. And there's investigations occurring by two different uh, agents, governmental agencies. There's a uh, part of me says, you know, if we allowed, if I allowed supervised visitation between dad and, and child, that may have, be of benefit to the child uh, to be with dad. And there would be the protection of the supervi supervisor present. Uh, I, there's some concerns that if I were to allow that, that may uh, be not in the best, best interest of the child. Um, if there there were to have been uh, some abuse causing the causing the, the bruising, uh, there's some some weight to that given by the um, mental health therapist uh, that indicates that there's some some concerns expressed by the child of being with the father. There's um, some limitations to that because these things kind of take their take on a life of their own, and and kids are pretty savvy and they pick up on stuff and pick up on fears and the like so there's that there's that weighing there uh there's also the issue of if there was with this allegation of abuse there is this concern that um, if there has been some type of an assaultive behavior the court doesn't necessarily want to put the person who is potentially abused with the person who has potentially abused them uh, which could potentially further traumatize the alleged victim so there's those concerns. There's also the, the concerns raised by Mr. Miracle in that he said, you know, this, is, this isn't the first time that I've been falsely accused of, of things like this. Uh, and it's a way to exert control, if you will, over the parent or the father-child relationship. So those are some of the, th the things that I'm weighing in my mind. Uh, and it's not a clear-cut uh, resolution in my mind. I mean, in part, part of me uh, thinks it's important to have a parental child contact when when there are allegations if it can be done in a safe manner um, that's tempered by the fact that there's ongoing investigations uh, which could potentially involve concerns for um, not direct witness tampering uh, but kind of indirect uh, influence so um, and there's also those concerns for further potential traumatization if there was um, the suspected abuse did occur, which we, we don't know at this point. Um, so at this point, um, I'm going to hold off on ordering any supervised visitation for the father and his child at this point until we have more information from either CPS or, or law enforcement. I don't want to let the case linger. Um, I want to review it. Uh, certainly, if the parties come up with more information or there's some decisions made by outside agencies, you could note it up and notify the court. Uh, however, uh, I don't want to lose track of the case, uh, so I'm proposing, and if you could check your calendars, please, uh, for March 13th, come back March 13th at 9 a.m. to check the status 
of uh, any updated uh, reports from CPS and or uh, law enforcement related to the investigation. How do your schedules look on that date? March 13th. Okay, Mr. Miracle. March 13th works for me. Okay, thank you, Ms. Casciato. Mr. Miracle. Um, yeah, March 13th will work. Okay, so we'll reconvene at that time at, at 9 a.m. Um, and so, so we'll we'll reconvene at that time to check status of those those respective investigations. Um, so, okay. okay, I'll try and to get a hold of CPS and during that time and see if I can get an update from them and find out what's going on too. Right. Okay. All right, Mr. Miracle, any, did you have any questions? Yes, sir. So, um, I haven't had like any contact with my son at all. Is there any way I can get like at least phone visitations or Zoom visitation or Zoom meeting or something? I haven't seen him in like almost like almost three months, and it's over absolutely nothing. Okay, um, Ms. Kashada, do you have any input on that? Um, I I wouldn't object to like a phone visit of sorts. That that would be fine. Yeah, I, I think I, I think having visitation um, with the father would be appropriate. Uh, phone phone or Ms. Kashado, Mr. Miracle raised the uh, a video visit. Do you have any thoughts on that? A, a video visit would be fine as well. Okay. Frequency and, and schedules. It sounds like um, little guy's five, and so he's going to school, preschool. What, what's his schedule like? Um, well, he's not currently in school. Um, that's one thing I'm going to start doing for him because he does want to go to school. He's got the want and to learn um, to write and read. He's been doing really great at that. Um, so I do have I just got his birth certificate and his immunization record so I can I can enroll him in the school. Um, so I think it gets out about three o'clock or three thirty um, and he'll be taking the school bus to and fro. Um, yeah. So anytime after, like I'd say three thirty, anytime after three thirty would be fine with me. Okay. Mr. Miracle, what's what's your schedule look like? Um, yeah, anytime after three thirty will be fine. Frequency of the of those of those of, of those visits, uh, Mr. Miracle, what are you thinking? Um, I'd like to at least talk to him like two or three times a week, or you know, it, I I mean, I'd preferably like to talk to him once a day, but sure. um, I know it's not always feasible. Okay. Ms. Cachado. Um, I think two or three times a week would be better. I just, I don't have availability due to every day. <laughs> um, so yeah, two or three times a week would probably be best. So, so sometimes what happens is that a court will order visits to occur on certain days and certain times. And if the parties agree that there can be some flexibility of, of those times, I'm, I'm fine with that. But if there's ever a dispute, then it goes back to the, the order of the court, which would be, you know, three times a week uh, for, for up to, for up to 45 minutes. So three times a week for up to 45 minutes. And kind of the, the general rule would be a Monday, Wednesday, Friday uh, at, at 4 p.m. If that works for the parties. Okay, that works for me. Mr. Miracle? Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Um, so generally, you know, five-year-olds, sometimes they uh, need a little prompting and, and direction from, on, from the parent who's with the child at the, at the time. Because sometimes there's lots of distractions, so any efforts that can be made to help the child stay focused, you know, it's it's, it's tough at that age. Uh, they're pretty busy people, uh, and makes it sometimes hard. So any distractions, if those could be eliminated, that would be, I think, that would aid in the in the visitation. So with that said, I'll I'll draft an order okay. and I'll get it submitted today that allows for th up to th uh, three visits per week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, starting at 4 p.m. A duration of up to 45 minutes, but of course it's that's tempered by kind of a reasonability thing, depending on, you know, a five-year-old's attention spans and the like. And uh, so I'll get that filed. And if the parties need a copy of it, you can check with the clerk's office and obtain that copy. Okay. Any Thank questions you, from either party? No, no you're, you're on. on. Okay. All right. Thank you both. I appreciate your input. Um, and that concludes the matter for today. And then we did set the date for the future, did we not? We set um, yes, I believe March 13th at 9 a.m. Yep. Okay. Very good. So we'll come back at that time and uh, we'll readdress things. Thank you. Thank you, Your Thank Honor. You. All right. So that ends all the cases that I had docketed for today.